The next time you have a family get-together, you might look over your shoulder. There may be a camera there. In That's Life, Blake Edwards shows us how a family life can become the stuff of a feature motion picture. Was there a point in time somewhere, Blake, where you said, I think this would make a movie? Can you take us back to that? Mm, I don't ever recall saying, I think this would make a movie. And what happened was that I felt that I wanted to do something different, and uh, somehow it came to me that it would be interesting to, uh, to do something about a family. And then why not my family? Yeah, exactly. You know, and it is sort of was a process. And, and then why then not I began in my to, house? Yeah, well, <laughs> why not in my house was never a consideration in the beginning. It, that only happened when we couldn't find a house to do it in, that nobody would allow us in there for that length of time. Well, we know they build sets for reasons, to make yeah. it convenient for lighting, That's for right. example. Well, a house is not going to work too well for that, is it? No, Any but, we, but we couldn't afford to, uh, to build the sets. I mean, this was a film that I decided to make uh, within a certain budget and uh, put up our own money. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, we uh, couldn't afford to go into a studio and pay the overhead and construction costs. And as you will notice, there were no uh, production designer credits and things like that. In this. Well, there must have been times when you wanted nothing more than to keep filmmaking out of your family life. Yes. Here, it's in your family. Like, tell correct. us about the shift from one ideology to well, the other. Well, I figured, I, you know, it would be fun to do it once, and I have such talented people who are members of my family, and it would sure. be fun to do it yeah. with them. And so, so everything is yours, the lawn sprinklers, the sheep on the lawn? Everything. Yeah, for and, better or for worse. And, the, and a lot of the questions you have about being a grandpa? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we get to Jack Lemmon. In... In making a movie that's going to be somewhat about yourself, why not make it about a filmmaker instead of, say, an architect? Or well, because I, f I felt that getting close to the bone about the emotional aspects of the family was okay, yeah. but I didn't want to deal with what I thought was too specialized. And once you're into film and things like that, uh, uh, I, I just felt that I should get at least somewhat away from the reality of, okay. you know, and so I chose architects simply because I feel that uh, the architect runs into a lot of the same problems that I do. I'm an architect of, in a sense. I have the same problems with that Jack had with the lady who said, you know, I, I've decided I want to change this and I want to change that, and he had to go through a capricious lady who wants to change his basic design. But Ibsen tells us sometimes that architects want to build a tower tall enough for them to jump off of. It's almost as if there's a temptation in the artist to work himself into a corner or up onto a balcony from which there's no escape. Has this happened in pictures where you found yourself creating a situation that it was tough to work out of, work through, or to Oh, resolve? yes. I think quite often I will create a situation that's tough to, to work out of, but I think that makes it a challenge. I've never found one that I couldn't, one way or another, work my way out of. Sometimes not very effectively, and, you know, other times v very effective. I, the, the best things I've done are when I've run up against enormous challenges that, uh, that sometimes have been created by me, either consciously or unconsciously. And there isn't it nice is. to surprise yourself? Oh, yeah. That oh, that's wonderful. It, it, it's, you know, the spice of what it's all about. Has there been a film or a situation in a film where we can point to that and say, Blake didn't know that was going to work out the way it did until it oh, did. There are a lot of those. <laughs> there are a lot of those, you know, uh, that, that started out down this road and suddenly came to a grinding halt and said, my God, it doesn't work. And so the person who considers your body of work as a whole had better confront that paradox right away. Sure, I That as so. a conscious, creative artist, you still leave the door open for yeah. accident. Yeah, yeah, of course. It is a body of work among filmmakers today is unique. I mean, how many filmmakers can we think of today have spanned as many years, as many films, successful films, entertaining films as you? Does it frighten you when people come up to you with questions like that or assessments like that? Does it make you feel old or embalmed? Yeah, it or makes something? me feel a little old. It, it, so how do you deal with that? That's the truth of it, and then I deal with the truth. I say, mm -hmm. okay, that's the way it is, but to wait till you see the next 20 years. <laughs> the next 20 years. Sure. Why not? 
Let's talk about that because that brings us maybe to Kansas City. As we all know, there was a Kansas City Jazz Project. Yeah. What happened and is it gone forever? I guess it is gone forever. It was. It ended up in in somebody else's control, and they did with it what they thought appropriate, and uh, I didn't. And so, it sadly, you know, is gone, uh, never to be recovered. But that doesn't mean that there can't be another Kansas City project, another jazz project, which is what I really want to do. And we instantly think of your work with Mancini on Peter Gunn, Mr. Lucky. Your association with music maybe has been undervalued somewhat. Have you and Mancini actively collaborated, actually, or is he just a simpatico composer? Well, we've collaborated like I collaborate with so many experts that I deal with all the time. You know, they, they are the experts, and I say, hey, here it is. I give you, you know, the movie. You go out and, and do what you have to do with it. Uh, uh, but how can you enlist your own trust in somebody? I mean, how do you know who you can that. trust? Well, by, by the way they perform. Although, you know, I, I, there's a great story Hank to, tells about it, that uh, uh, Hank had done one job for me, and it was just simply coming in, writing some extra music for a film that I did at Universal. They brought this young guy in and said, uh, he's going to write it. And I said, terrific. And he did, and I loved it. I thought, gee, there's a talent. And is, as I can do, I was walking in or coming out of the commissary, I don't remember which it was one day, and I was getting ready to do Peter Gunn, and, and I turned to Hank, I said, you want to do a television show? And he said, yeah. And I said, fine, and I gave him the script, and I never heard the f one note of music until I walked on the scoring stage. He called me one day and said, can I do a jazz score? And I said, do whatever you want. Uh, so I sort of take chances because I well, like to be surprised. Yeah, and it's a Fellini Rota equivalent here, I think. The filmmaker and the music are sort of interchangeable after yeah. all. That's okay with you. Sure. Now we think of Monument Valley for John Ford, Boudoirs for Lubitsch. Your favorite arena of action, how would you define it? Oh, God, I don't Dramatic know. Dramatic space. I don't know. I, I leave that to others to define. I think that if I try to define it too much, I might be caught up in it. And I'd rather have other people say they figured it out and yeah. I'm always I'm always surprised by you know people that say I write something about it and, and they make a some kind of view of what I'm all about and, and what I was thinking of at that point I, is that what I was thinking about that's terrific that's, yeah, hey that's pretty interesting well as long as we watch the screen we'll see Blake Edwards thank you and we'll see that's life as well and from Toronto with Blake for KCTV 5 I'm John Tibbetts